Hey guys, and welcome back to Growing Up Godly. It's been a while since we've done the discussion video, so I'm really excited that we get to do this one for you guys today. So today we are discussing drama, which is a huge topic between teens and tweens. And it's gotten so, so much bigger with social media, social platforming, all that kind of stuff. So today we're going to talk about how to deal with drama according to God's Word. Let's get into the video. So drama can be a really hard concept to understand because I feel like there's so many aspects of drama yeah. under like one big umbrella. So Ashlyn, who's super creative, came up with an analogy that we're going to be using throughout our video to help all of us understand drama. So we're going to explain that to you first and then get into our discussion. So the analogy we have for you today is drama being like snow. It's kind of weird, so hang in there with me. So sometimes drama is picked up in little snowballs and thrown at each other, sometimes jokingly, sometimes you don't mean to hit someone, but you actually do and it stings a little. And it just kind of fades away after time and everything's pretty much cool. But sometimes those little snowballs can turn into avalanches that destroy relationships and friendships and most of all trust between friends and peers and stuff like that. With that in mind, let's go ahead and start our, our discussion on drama. So our first point is don't get in the line of fire of all those snowballs. Our key word for this point is reputation. There are a few ways that you can avoid giving yourself a reputation of being a dramatic person. So something we have always been taught by our parents and that we really appreciate is to live above assumption. So whatever we do, we really try and keep this focus of what are people going to assume about that, about us when we're doing this? And not in a way of like we care about what people think. We're not trying to say that at all. Just thinking, hey, you know, I have to go do this over here um, with this guy. Oh, we're going to be in a room together. We should have someone else with us just so that if someone walks by, you know, they're not assuming the worst. Because reputation is very important, especially as Christians. Because we carry Christ's name, what people think about you doesn't really matter, but what people think about Christ through you does matter. And if they see things that make them assume something that isn't true, that can start a bunch of rumors that you just do not want in your life. So try and keep in mind as you're going through your day to day, not to put yourself in situations where assumptions can be made that you don't want to be made about you. So unless absolutely necessary, Stay out of other people's drama. If you walk into the middle of a snowball fight, it's most likely that you're going to get hit, knocked down, and definitely involved. Let's define necessary, because sometimes we think getting involved is necessary, but sometimes it's not. So necessary means is when you see two friends that if you don't do something, their friendship is going to get torn apart. Um, if you don't step in then some, an avalanche is going to occur that you can prevent, then it's necessary to get into the business and make sure that everything turns out okay. But unless it's absolutely necessary, just try to stay away. And if you do have to get involved, our advice would be to get a parent or someone who is very spiritually strong in your life mm -hmm. who can either advise you or help step in with you to resolve that conflict because sometimes we can't do it on our own. We need some adult supervision. Second point is to not make avalanches out of snowballs. And the key word here is perspective. So sometimes things can seem like a much bigger deal than they actually are. So there are a few ways to gain a new perspective. The first one is in your mind. You want to make sure that you don't think of snowballs like avalanches. Now this is a big problem among younger tweens. Like mm -hmm. I feel like as you mature, you start to get better at this, but 10 to 14, 15 is a stage where everything seems like such a bigger deal than it actually is. And you've just got to mentally prepare yourself and teach yourself to tone it down a couple of notches. Because honestly, nothing in your life is really that bad when it comes to <laughs> drama. <laughs> yes. So a few ways you can help with this is just stop and think about your situation. Don't let your emotions control everything you do. Just think about it. And also take a look at other people's experiences and situations. You don't want to always be comparing, but seeing how it could be worse may help you to think, oh, you know what, this isn't actually that bad and it doesn't have to be a big deal. 
Because if it's a big deal in your mind, then it's going to become a big deal in your life, and you don't want that. Another thing you can do if you want to is say your situation out loud, just even by yourself in your room. Sometimes when you explain something, you're like, actually, that isn't that big of a deal. I don't know why I'm even thinking about this as such a big deal. And sometimes it helps me is just to like try and explain my situation, and it helps. Next is in your words. Now your words are a reflection of your thoughts and your thoughts are a reflection of your heart. So what comes out is ultimately what you're sitting on in your heart. So if you're talking a lot about drama and gossip and getting involved in that, then it's always good to go back and do a heart check. Am I spending time in the word like I need to? Am I praying and talking to God and listening to him like I should? because your words are a reflection of what's truly in your heart. So definitely try to limit how much you talk about drama with your friends so it doesn't consume your mind. And make sure not to over-dramatize your situations when you're talking about it with your friends. Especially as women, we tend to over-exaggerate everything. everything. <laughs> because we like things to be interesting. Yeah. And usually situations that are not that interesting unless you exaggerate it yes but that can be such a huge Dangerous. problem with drama because it can start out this small someone exaggerate it the next someone person exaggerates it, it and then avalanche that's effect. why little assumptions can turn into huge rumors and avalanches our third point is stop the snowball from rolling down the hill and becoming an avalanche our keyword here is reactions so sometimes something that can start off as a snowball can be rolled down a hill and it continues to feed off of drama and over dramatic people like we were saying in our last point and it becomes just bigger and bigger and then it turns into an avalanche. But there's something you can do to stop this. You can, you can stop that flow of drama before it gets too big. The biggest way to control that is through your reactions. People tend to feed off of other people when it comes to drama. So if you just react in a Christ-like manner, just being like, you know what, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to get involved in that. It'll tend to really stop people because mm -hmm. if they don't have anyone to feed off of for the drama, they tend to be like, oh, okay, okay, let's let this go. This is not a big deal after all. And you can help them refocus and be like, well, she doesn't think it's a big deal. So maybe it's like not actually a big deal. Like you can help other people out. Point number four is don't throw snowballs or you'll get hit. This kind of goes with the phrase, what goes around and comes around. And our key word is words or communication. So first of all, make sure you understand the power that are in your words. We actually made a video about this called We Can Hurt or Heal. So go back to that video because it's really good. And um, that's why we're not going to go uh, very into detail about the words because we already have a video. So make sure to check that out um, after you finish watching this one. So here's a really easy to follow rule that you can remember when you're like, oh, I don't know if I should say this or if it's actually hurtful. What I like to remember is if you wouldn't say it in front of their face, don't say it behind their back. If you wouldn't be comfortable going up to the person and telling them what you're talking about them like behind their back, then you shouldn't be talking about them that way. Um, this is just what I like to do because it's just a very easy way to stay safe when it comes to talking about people behind their backs. So also use your words to clearly communicate with your friends to avoid any misunderstandings that could hurt them. Especially now with social media and text, you, you see the words but you don't see their tone or they could be being, you know, funny or joking but you take it as completely serious. So make sure that you're very clear with your friends and so they don't get hurt and then take it out on you and you get hurt and snowball effect. This is such an important thing to learn and the earlier you learn it, the better. If I had known this years ago, it would have helped so much with my middle school and early high school experience because people, the main cause of drama in middle or high school is lack of communication because emotions are strong. You know, people aren't sure what they're feeling, what they're thinking, and so they just kind of say stuff, and the communication just isn't there. People don't understand why they said it or what they said for that reason, and the drama started. Also, if you feel hurt by your friend for something they said, and you, you're not sure if it was intentional or not, be sure to go and ask them, be like, hey, this kind of hurt me. Did you actually mean that? Did you aim that snowball to hit me or just, like, joking, like, just throwing it? Because um, sometimes your friends have no idea that they hurt you and then you can get bitter and then they can get angry. 
it's just a big mess. So make sure that you're communicating with your friends about what you say and what they say. Pause! So this video has gotten a bit lengthy, so we've decided to cut it into two separate parts. So make sure and stay tuned for part two. Just be thinking about what we've said, starting to apply that in your life now, and make sure and stay tuned for the second half of this video. There's a lot more coming, and I believe it's going to be really helpful, so make sure to tune back in when we post that video. Yep, we have our huge, big main point in that video, so you don't want to miss that. Best point ever. And if you missed our We Can Hurt or Heal Words video, please click that little I button in the corner, and you can go check that out if that's something you want to learn more about or struggling with or anything. So we'll see you guys for part two. Bye! Bye.